A Catholic priest in Nigeria who was freed after being kidnapped late last month is responding well to medical treatment. Father Elijah Juma was taken captive by suspected Boko Haram insurgents on June 30th. He was freed on July 8th after escaping. The diocese says the story is a reminder that God is alive and will never disappoint the faithful, especially in critical times. However, the situation in Nigeria remains dangerous for many Christians. Joining us now with more is Tony Perkins, Commissioner of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. Commissioner Perkins, great to be with you. Thank you for your time today. Uh, a local media report today that Christian schools in Nigeria have been forced to close because of a rise in kidnappings. What more can you tell us about that and the situation on the ground for the faithful in Nigeria? I think you've described it quite well. It is a dire situation, and it's trending in a very negative direction. Uh, we've seen just since December over a 1,000 abductions that have taken place. Now, this is on top of uh, the other attacks that have taken place on houses of worship, churches, uh, and outright uh, attacks on Christians. Uh, a lot of this focused, uh, as you pointed out, on schools, uh, especially as it pertains to uh, young girls. Uh, they are being abducted and many of them carried away, some of them still in captivity today. And you had also mentioned houses of worships, attacks on them. What more can you tell us about that? Well, we've seen a rise in this, especially in the northern part of uh, Nigeria. We saw uh, last year, we documented, and of course, it is not uh, totally comprehensive. We base our information uh, on things that we can verify. So there, there are other reports that are out there, but we have documented at least nine churches uh, and uh, two mosques during uh, 2020 that were burned, uh, two Christian villages that uh, were raided as well. Uh, these are by uh, Islamic militants uh, in many cases. Boko Haram is one of the organizations that you uh, you mentioned that uh, on Christmas Eve uh, attacked three Christ uh, Christian uh, communities in northern Nigeria. So horrific. And I also understand that you've been following uh, the story of a young woman in Nigeria who was abducted, I guess, about three years ago, and she just celebrated her 18th birthday while she was in captivity. Can you tell us more about her and why her story is so important? Well, Leah Sherbu was uh, abducted actually four years ago. She just celebrated her 18th birthday in captivity. Uh, I've been tracking her situation. She is uh, what we, at the commission, we have a program called our Religious Prisoners of Conscience Project, where we encourage people to adopt, adopt these prisoners of, uh, of, of conscience, these religious prisoners, and, and pray for them, advocate for them. And so uh, this is one of my prisoners, uh, Leah, that I adopted when coming on to the commission three years ago and have been, I've talked to her mother, her, I've talked to her family and those that advocate for her. And uh, been tracking. Uh, she uh, recently uh, gave birth to a second child, reportedly while she was in captivity. She's there for one reason, and that is that she has refused to denounce Christ. She she has refused to walk away from her Christian faith, and so. Uh, the Islamic militants there have continued to, to hold her. So I would uh, please ask people to join me in praying for, for Leah, as she represents so many young girls that have been carried into captivity and brutalized, tortured. It, it's unbelievable what some of these children have to go through. And also pray for their parents. As a father of five children, I can only imagine, and, I, and, and having spoken to her mother, I know exactly the agony that, that family goes through each and every day as they think about their daughter. So uh, what we can do here in this country is we can pray, but we can also advocate and call upon our government to do more to, to step in and help when they can. And uh, right now, we're at a critical moment because the Nigerian government has actually reached out and asked for help from the United States government. And so uh, we're encouraging the government to take some specific steps to try and help uh, bring this situation under control, because this is a very, very volatile situation. Nigeria, over 200 million people, largest uh, country by population on the African continent. And it is uh, it will have implications not only for the the African continent how this plays out, but also into Europe as we could see more and more refugees fleeing Nigeria. 
Well, Commissioner, thank you so much for your time and to speaking with us about this really important. Uh, Tony Perkins, Vice Chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, thank you again. Thank you.